Charmy B is a weird character. If you just know him from the games, then it's likely that you know him as this kind of goofy and maybe a bit dumb kid. But there's actually a kind of weird story tied to the Charmy character in the Archie Sonic comics. And that's what I'd like to talk about today. So Charmy initially appeared in the comics way before he would appear in Sonic Heroes, but obviously he had shown up after his appearance in Knuckles' Chaotix. Charmy in Knuckles' Chaotix doesn't have much of a character to go off of, so of course when it came to writing him in the comics, all they really had to work with was that he was 16. So in the comics, at least initially, Charmy was a 16-year-old prince with a surprisingly tragic story that involves Eggman destroying his home, taking most of his people into egg grapes, which are these chambers that essentially siphon your life energy to power Eggman City until you die. With what was essentially the genocide of his people, Charmy and his girlfriend Saffron are all that are left. And then Sonic Heroes happened. See, in Sonic Heroes, for whatever reason, Charmy is retconned to being 6 years old. I guess because every team needed a child on it, like you had Tails on Sonic's team, and Cream and Amy's team, Charmy in the Chaotix, and Omega in the Dark team. So the comics tried to follow this unexplained retcon, and honestly, it was done pretty poorly. But it starts off pretty cool, so I mean, at least there's that. Basically, Eggman and all of his forces come in and they try to destroy Knothole, but what's wild is they actually manage to succeed. Eggman and Snively have these incredibly strong mechs, and even after Sonic does this insane peel out, he finds that he's unmatched and that it's no use, which then results in the defeat of Knothole and also results in most of the Freedom Fighters being kidnapped by Eggman. This leaves the core team pretty shaken. Amy is absolutely devastated as Sonic explains to her that their home was destroyed and that the majority of their friends were abducted into egg grapes. Sonic decides that he's going to handle all of this on his own, and we get this really cool moment of growth for Tails, where he calls out Sonic's reckless behavior, and I think it's really cool to see Tails grow past this point of just being a blind Sonic fanboy. Things, meanwhile, aren't going so great for the captured Freedom Fighters and Chaotix. Eggman monologues about how they're going to give their lives for his cause. Eggman then decides that he's going to accelerate the process on one of the grapes, as a symbol that he's actually very serious about the danger that everybody finds themselves in in this moment. Around the same time, Charmy comforts his girlfriend Saffron. This pulls Eggman's attention towards him as he brings the grave closer to Eggman, before he begins to recount about how he had destroyed Charmy's kingdom and ruined his life. Now, despite all of this, Charmy is actually kind of cool, as he mentions that despite the damage that's been done to him, he'll continue to fight for this world. Now, while all of this is happening, the four remaining Freedom Fighters rush towards Eggman, much to Sonic's annoyance. The group, however, finds themselves a little bit too late as they penetrate the walls where the egg grapes are held, because Eggman had just activated Charmy's grape. Weirdest sentence I've ever said. Luckily though, the team manages to rescue everyone, including Charmy, before he had all of his life energy drained. And through some fancy computer shenanigans, they manage to teleport themselves to safety. Once safe though, it's clear that things for Charmy aren't going so well, as it turns out that his mind has been irreversibly damaged. He remembers who he is as well as his girlfriend, but mentally, he's now a 6 year old in a 16 year old's body. This is mostly played up for laughs at the moment, but it really leaves kind of a bad taste in your mouth because you're essentially being told to laugh at somebody who has brain damage. From here, Charmy would mostly take a backseat in pretty much every story, and he'd rarely, if ever, be seen talking again. And a lot of the times when he did, it was a lot less comical than in this moment here. Like this one time where he actually helped Knuckles with some of his anger issues while he talked about flowers, and that was kind of cool. But unfortunately, Charmy wouldn't ever find his character resolved. At one point, he would find himself on Angel Island, along with the other Chaotix, where Espio was pointing out that he knows something about all of them. And after hearing Espio point out that Vector is actually from Down Under, he asks Espio to tell him something about himself. After looking awkwardly at Saffron, Espio explains that Charmy was once a prince before Eggman had destroyed his home and nearly destroyed his mind. Unfortunately though, Charmy just kind of stares at Espio dumbfound. It's kind of unsure if a part of him actually understands, but he ends up announcing that he would remember something like that and decides to choose not to believe in any of what Espio had just said. Shortly after that, Saffron explains to Espio that Charmy is still recovering and he needs more time. But unfortunately, Charmy wouldn't have more time and this is the state that he would be left in, because shortly after this, the Super Genesis wave would happen and it would effectively reboot Charmy as having always been 6. Never having been a prince and overall in my opinion, having lost a lot of what made him an interesting character. 
With all of Charmy's history as the prince being gone, so too was Saffron, and instead, now we just have this goofy kid, which is kind of a bummer if I'm being honest. And with that, we've come to the end of this video. But I do have two fun facts. The first one is less interesting, but I feel like it's important to mention. And that's that Ian Flynn had actually mentioned that, looking back on it, changing Charmy to essentially somebody with brain damage and then making him a comedic character was pretty insensitive, which is why Charmy took a back seat for the majority of the Archie Sonic comic run after this incident with the egg grapes. Now, here's actually what I think is a really interesting fun fact, and that's that Charmy B's first appearance wasn't actually in Knuckles' Chaotix, but rather it was in a piece of lost Sonic manga, where he showed up with a very different design, several years prior to the game coming out. I'm not actually going to say a ton about this manga though, because I do have a video that I want to do on it as I go further in depth in this lost piece of media, but I do think that it's kind of interesting to see that Charmy had an initial root in something so old. But yeah, that's it, and thanks so much for watching it this far along. I'd love it if you could share the love by doing that thing that all the YouTubers ask for, like liking, sharing, subscribing, you know, sacrificing your firstborn son to me. But ultimately, you don't have to do that, and I just hope you have a nice day.